again uh, good morning one and all uh, today we will be seeing that continuation of that uh, for s parameters and uh, we know that if you take the two port network what we have seen as uh, last class is uh, we have taken a two port uh, device and we had uh, this is a one this is a two there are two ports why it is called ports is so there are two ways uh, it can enter or exit there are possibility it, it can enter anyway it can come from the first or it can come from the second uh, that is there it can uh, there, there are two uh, entry or exit point uh, so it's called a ports so here uh, when you take a two port device uh, if it is a two port uh, we have seen that uh, there are two cross two matrix if it is a three ports it is a three cross three matrix and so on so we have taken elemental one uh, since it is uh, uh, if i know that uh, two cross two i can actually uh, know scale up to any number of ports i think it is s2 fine so uh, here uh, what we have seen yesterday is what is s11 so usually s parameters always deals with uh, reflected voltage wave divided by incident voltage wave so typically is as close as uh, seeing a reflection coefficient in the first port so that what we have seen that so always this first number will tell me uh, where is the output that is sij the first number will tell me the output and the second number will tell me from where that is input okay so always uh, this has to be nomenclatures when you are doing experiments also uh, keep it in mind the first number is output the second number is the input uh, from where it is coming that way if you able to put that uh, the word into that you can easily understand one is output from where it is coming again one so that is what uh, s11 means for and if you take s11 on s uh, in this case uh, if you take a two port network basically there is a incident voltage that we call as v1 plus because is the first port incident voltage sin incidents always will be written as plus and the negative means for reflected so normally when i give the input that is incident to the first port that is v1 plus and uh, if it is incident from the second port it is called v2 plus if it is uh, coming out from the port that means that reflected is second port is v2 minus the first port is reflected is v1 minus so this way uh, we usually normally uh, you know Uh, relate this uh, incident and reflected uh, voltage waves in the any port of the microwave uh, devices and network so that is what as parameter scattering parameter as the name suggest is is a scattering uh, because the wave is scattering the incident and reflected is scattering so the quantity to measure how much is reflected divided by incident is nothing but the s value in the matrix element so if you take s11 we have seen that it is nothing but v1 minus reflected in the first port that is output as a first port and input also the first port that is incident voltage and similarly s12 i can write the output at first port that is reflected from the first port and uh, incident that is a uh, input to the second port plus and similarly if you take that um, s21 the output at second port that is reflected from the second port and uh, from the first port that is incident from the first port and what is that s22 is uh, what is the reflected from the second port and incident also in the second port there is input also in the second port and uh, this is only valid we have seen that uh, no uh, conceptually if i give any power let us voltage let us take uh, one voltage the reflection what is coming is let us take 0.01 millivolt okay this is my reflection is coming from the first port so this is uh, v1 minus by v1 plus is equal to s11 is valid only this v2 plus is zero there should not be any output coming from the you uh, know uh, reverse basically 
Okay, uh, or else what happens? This is not exactly is not valid. You should consider these also because uh, when you have that, uh, for example, higher frequency circuits, uh, this is meant to be only for mainly for higher frequency 5G or higher frequency circuits. If the matching is not done in a uh, successive stages, there is a chances that you know, power can be reflected back. So that case V2 plus may not be zero. So we have to consider that also to uh, design this, uh, you know, uh, devices and it, uh, analyze them. When you want to analyze this, this also we have to take care basically. So this is only valid when there is no input coming from the uh, output side. And S12 equal to V1 minus V2 plus valid. I mean to say what is that S12? S12 is the output in the first port. I will erase this. Okay. So, let's take. Okay. So, what is that S12? S12 is V1 minus, that is this, uh, divided by V2 plus. That means to that V2 plus. So, what is that? The in output I am taking. Uh, from the first port here is my output and the input is coming from the second port. Is that, that what it means for? This is only valid, you can immediately say it. this is valid only when V1 plus is 0. That is V1 plus should be 0. Okay, let's come to that. Uh, what is that means basically? So, uh, I suppose to, uh, you know, uh, for example, it based on the context of two port device. So, if we take the two port device, for example, let us take isolator. So that uh, that what you are going to do, you know, use it in the lab. Isolator is one of the example of two port device. Uh, it may typically I mean show the diagram. It may look like uh, typically, uh, it's you no know, 3D structure like that. There is small cavity will be there. So where the wave will start propagate from one port to this is a 3D. The, this side basically this is the one port this is the second port this is i will use it immediately after reflex klistron reflex klistron this is microwave source basically it's a microwave generator so it will provide me 8 to 12 gigahertz basically okay the immediately i will use that after this isolator so the reason to use the isolator is uh, i don't want any signal coming from opposite direction. I don't want anything because even smaller uh, the power which is coming in the feedback uh, or uh, the what we say is the leakage uh, generally should not affect my the source. Source is very sensitive so it should not affect my source so that I use the isolator and normally in the microwave test bench the immediately the source after that isolator will be there. That is a two port device. So if you take this two port device uh, what I try to uh, you know, study by using S12, what is that S12 is, what is output here, this is my output, so this is my input. So why do I want this is, it is something like a typical like a switch, isolated is typical like a switch, it should, also, no, should only follow only one direction, not in the opposite direction, not in the opposite direction. Okay. So, in that case, uh, this S12 is a measurement of how much is reverse voltage is there in the isolator. That is quantitative to measure how much leakage is there. Okay, That is uh, normally we give us some name for that. This is for isolation. Okay, So, what is isolation? Uh, it is not loss, simply isolation. How much is uh, you know, the reverse is isolated? So, however, uh, we have uh, uh, like named this S1 and as a return loss in the previous class. Similarly, for S12, practically, you know, we name it as isolation. So, they normally give it in the DB. So, practically, what I want, uh, practically, a uh, very good isolator has to be, uh, there is no output when it's coming in the reverse direction. So, in that case, that V1 minus has to be 0. There should not be any output coming back. So, V1 minus has to be 0. And V2 plus, let it be... Um, any leakage is there, you know, some after isolator I have alternators and frequency meter and antennas everything. If there is any mismatch in any stage, 
there are power there is a possibility it can reflect we cannot 100 percentage match it if i doing a some tuning uh, if there is any if it is not the component is not attached correctly there will be a mismatch in the impedance definitely that will be a uh, the reverse uh, power uh, will be there in the dispatch so there is some input will be there let it be whatever may the input if output tends to be zero means that perfect isolation my isolator is working as uh, as record actually as per design it is working so s12 has to be zero for isolator so if you take a 10 log of zero it is nothing but infinity so if infinity db if you are getting isolation is a very perfect isolator basically but practically there may be very small leakage uh, typically minus 40 db usually i'll get so what is minus 40 db so the leakage will be let it be 0 0.001 and one is a, the input is coming from the uh, output port so if you divide by this you'll get a time or, or what you will get this is a 10 log 0 0.001 so it's not a 10 log it's a 20 log why should i take a 20 log because that uh, this is a voltage so 20 if it is a power is 10 log okay give me a second i'm just getting a call i will come back and just start analyzing it and just uh, give me a second Okay, so I hope uh, uh, this has made some sense. So uh, I, S12 is uh, something measurement in the reverse direction. What is that uh, the input uh, in the second port output is the first port in the reverse direction. It's typically to say how much isolation it is. Typically is infinity to be for isolator. This may not be the only name for isolation. If we take that filters, definitely filter can work in both directions no it's something like a sim, no? we'll come no come to that as parameter properties this is one of example is isolator the alternator is there and also there are filters and there are example for two port device so if you measure in the reverse direction the isolation is only appropriate name for isolator for a different components it may have a different name for that only that is a difference but the concept is remains same so s12 is v1 minus by v2 plus and uh, other more uh, uh, more interesting other important things is s21 so what is that s21 so let me raise this raise this so what is this s21 so s21 is what is the output okay what is the output in the second port that is v2 minus reflected from the second port that is output and v1 plus that is the input this is my output this is my input okay so what it means it is more like a naturally uh, if you give any input i will expect some output like amplifier no i uh, amplify if i give some input it should amplify and i have to measure the output so it's more uh, typically used in any all the most of the devices s21 so s21 the name for s21 in practice uh, we call as an insertion so how much insertion uh, sometime they will say insertion loss okay what is that insertion losses if you take a passive devices like isolators or alternators the input uh, if you take uh, for example one voltage output we expect as it is the same uh, because uh, i don't want any for example if you take isolator uh, no uh, after reflex please turn microwave source it should send the power all the ports to the next stage for example antennas or uh, frequency meters you know i should uh, get all the power which is coming from the source i don't want any uh, waste any powers inside the isolator should not be alternated the reason is uh, it will consume a lot of power reflex crystal microwave source 
uh, no, it typically it's something like a bigger like a uh, UPS because you have a you know, bigger transformers definitely it will consume lot of powers so I don't want any power is wasted in my uh, isolator so that uh, all the one voltage is supposed to be appear in the second port so what is the ideal value of S21 the S21 is V2 minus the V1 plus I mean to say the output should be equal to the input the ideal value of S21 is 1 ideal value of S12 is 0 for isolator it may not be a case for alternators that will come to that later so this is s21 is typically for uh, most of the device s21 should be equals to close to one so what uh, what is the insertion loss is take a 20 log of s21 that is my insertion loss so log one is zero so zero db is the ideal insertion loss there is no loss is present but practical uh, uh, all the devices wave will have a minimal some conductor loss so let us take uh, uh, no, the output is little alternator let us uh, uh, keep some value uh, probably 0.9 voltage input is 1 voltage so if you take s21 is uh, 0.9 by 1 typically s21 is 0.9 it is close to 1 not 1 so if you take uh, for example this is 20 log we need to take a 0.9 typically if you uh, see that uh, whichever is coming log less than 1 you will get a negative value ok I will just calculate what is the value ok so log I am going to take 0.9 and uh, log so it is coming uh, it is giving minus 0 0.05 ok minus 20 into uh, mi minus 0 0.046 this value Okay, typically if you multiply with the 20 so I'm getting close to minus uh, 0 0.9 db okay this is better somewhat better okay so some cases if you get take a 0.5 let us take a output I only get half of the power like half of the voltage with respect to the input so s21 is 0.1 divided by 1 it's a 0.5 20 log of 0.5 so typically how much you will get 0.5 take a log into 20 typically I will get minus 6 dB fine so uh, 0 dB is ideal uh, whichever less than that uh, even minus 1 dB minus 2 minus 3 means what it means power is getting alternated in the uh, you know, forward direction so I have to take care uh, when I am uh, you know, designing my uh, passive devices or when I am designing the network uh, any devices I have to take care that there is a minimal alternations in a forward direction that is S21 so S22 is as similar like S11 again this is and here one more condition what is the condition should be satisfied this is a V2 minus and V1 uh, plus uh, is only this is true only uh, when this V2 plus is 0 okay and similarly this condition is true only V1 plus is 0 okay so what is that uh, S22 is V2 minus by V2 uh, plus I mean to say what is the reflection is happening in the second port so ideally uh, if there is no reflection uh, coming from uh, V2 plus to V2 minus I mean to say that S22 is 0 then 10 log of 0 is infinity put minus for better clarity so minus infinity dB is ideal return loss and uh, 0 dB is ideal insertion loss and isolation is based on the device for an isolator it's the infinity db is the ideal value whichever uh, close to that it is better basically okay with that uh, understanding so what we'll do is we will go for esterometer properties okay so i think i hope it is clear so what we have seen is we have seen the two port device that is S matrix, scattering matrix, S11, S12, S21, S22. So, what is that uh, return loss in the first port? It's 20 log of S11. In the magnitude scale, I should take, put negative uh, for a better uh, understanding. So, minus 20 log of, what is the return loss in the second port? Minus 20 log of S22. What is the insertion loss? It's simply 20 log of. S21. What is that uh, 
Isolation symbol is usually L to differentiate with the insertion because both is started with the I, right? So differentiate. So we'll put L and uh, this is typically 20 log of S12. Okay. So these things, keep it in mind, there's more practical uh, uh, values, uh, no? practical coefficients used in the real time, used in the real time devices. Okay, when you pick that, uh, for example, when you uh, buy that isolators, if you look these parameters, then we will decide. Uh, let us take two isolators there. Okay, I'm going to buy some isolator one and two. And uh, I'm, I'll check this, for example, uh, return loss uh, one in both sides. Let us take one and two. Uh, typically here, uh, probably minus 10 dB. I'll take another uh, device, which is return losses. Uh, typically um, minus 30 dB. And uh, insertion, let us take this device insertion is let us take uh, point minus okay minus point uh, for example let us take 8 db this is insertion is typically minus 60. so if you have these two isolators i i will just prefer the second one compared to first one the reason is i know which is the ideal value right so the return loss more higher negative value is good basically means that there is no much reflection basically it's very good properly you know at least uh, properly matched device and uh, if i go for uh, insertion loss more the negative value it is not good uh, so let me interchange these values okay let me put this minus 6 db Okay, this is, let us take that, uh, probably minus one, uh, probably 0.3 dB. Okay, so if I take this, uh, I will prefer for higher return loss and less insertion loss. Means that the, the power attenuation is very less uh, in the forward direction. So I will prefer the second one compared to the first one. So these are the things uh, to compare that one device to other device. So it will be more you know, useful. These parameters are, these coefficients are useful to compare one to another. Okay. So with that uh, importance, uh, we will go to the parameters, uh, properties. So what are the properties in the S parameter? I hope it is clear. I am not confusing you. But if you have any doubts, you can put me in the chat. I will try to answer it. Okay. So there are three properties in S parameter. So number one. So number one is typically we say as matched property. Okay. So matched property and second one is symmetric property. Symmetric or sometimes it's called reciprocal property. And third one is lossless property. Okay, these are the uh, uh, the data analysis are we can uh, from the s parameter these are the uh, the uh, uh, no qualities we can infer from the s parameters so what is that mass properties so mass properties if you take the two port device if the two ports are uh, exactly matched i mean to say there is no reflection from uh, the same port if i give the any voltage in the first port uh, no, I mean to say the second port, I'm not giving any voltage. First port, what I'm giving, if it is reflected back, that is my reflection. So if I minimize the reflection, means that it is properly matched. So how to find out the properly matched? I know that return loss of the first port, that is V1 minus by V1 plus has to be zero. This is applicable for third port also. This is mean to say this is S11, this is S22. So I mean to say that V1, V2 minus reflection from the second port from the incident also from the second port. V2 minus and the V2 plus, so both are zero. So if you take the matrix, if the diagonals are zero, means that it properly matched. Okay, that is easier to do that uh, no? by looking the S parameter, if the diagonals are zero, I can say that uh, that particular port S11 
or S22 is properly matched. So what is the symmetrical property? The symmetrical property says that uh, if you compare, no, if you, for example, if you take the diode, okay, this is a field type, right? or if you take the resistor. There is some network issue, so I am trying to reconnect it. Okay, uh, let me take that uh, uh, there are two devices, PN junction and uh, resistor. So, uh, what what knowledge, you know, we usually do it in the circuits lab. The PN, uh, if it wants to work like a switch, this has to be connected in the positive potential, this to be an active potential. So, that is a forward bias. And in the reverse bias, it's supposed to not work. It should be off condition. So, uh, this diode is uh, one of the things I cannot, you know, change the polarity, basically. I can only work in the one direction, if it wants to do. I mean to say, uh, the, the reverse direction is not same as the forward direction. This is called the anti-symmetric. It is not symmetric device. If you take a resistor, no need of the polarity, no need of the, the pin. Uh, no, you can, uh, however way you want to, you can connect it. This is symmetric device. Similarly, in our passive, you know, microwave devices, say the passive or active, we have uh, some of the devices symmetric, some of the devices not symmetric. Whatever the things we have discussed in the isolator is not a symmetric device because if we interchange the port, for example, here, okay. <clears throat> for example, in the after the microwave source, I'm connected to the isolator. So the power has to go only one direction, not in the opposite direction. So if I reverse that, the isolator will not work. Uh, probably I will end up with a problem. Basically, I'm going to damage my source because uh, it will uh, you know, allow the power going into the reverse direction. Then I will get a problem with the source will be get damaged okay so i supposed to not interchange the ports this is a asymmetric or <coughs> uh, non reciprocal device i mean to say if non reciprocal or asymmetric device so what is my s parameter <coughs> so here uh, no what i mean to say that uh, the s21 which is the output at 2 that is output at 2 and input is 1, input is 1, which is not, I mean to say, now I am taking another case, if this output is 2 and input is 1, which is similar to input is 1, so input is 2 and output is 1. Okay, so if uh, this is my S21, this is my S1. So, if my input uh, output is 1 and input is 2, that is S12, which is equals to the output is 2 and input is 1. If I able to interchange the port, then S21 equals to S12. I mean to say, if SIJ equal to SJI, we call that device is symmetric. So, in the S matrix, if you look at any parameter, S12, this S21 also equal to S12, or this is S21. And this also S21. So we call these uh, devices or symmetric devices. Isolator definitely is not symmetric. Then coming to the interesting other property, lossless. Okay. So the lossless is if the device wants to be lossless, there are two subcategories has to be uh, 
uh, satisfy. What is that? If we take any S matrix, the elements are there. Uh, let us take some values. Uh, no? Typically, S values will not be greater than 1 Okay, for a passive devices. That you also keep it in mind. So what are the S value? Uh, if it is 0 0.8, 0 0.1, uh, let us take some 0 0.6. This can be a, uh, uh, no, uh, let us take 0 0.3. It will be always less than 1. Uh, it will not be greater than 1. Okay, so why it is? It can be equals to 1. That is possible. That can be equals to 1. Uh, not greater than 1. Less than or equals to 1 is possible. But not greater than 1. Why? Just uh, can you think about with respect to the reflected voltage by incident voltage V minus by V plus is nothing but S matrix, right? Reflected wave by incident. So how it can be always less than or equals to 1, not greater than 1? In a passive devices, because when you take an isolator, for example, whatever we have seen that, so the power which is coming from the second port, I mean to say this power after the isolator. So if you see this isolator from the klystron source and connected the isolator, klystron source, let us take 1 milliwatts power is coming from in terms of power. So it is coming to the second uh, no, output uh, from the input to the output here. Okay. From first port to the second port, I am getting the output. Okay, so uh, what happens that output is not always going to be greater than the input. It will be equals to the input or it will be less than the input. So what I mean to say that the V, uh, V2 minus will be always will be less than or equals to V1 plus. Okay, the output is always will be less than or equals to the input because that is a passive devices or it will be like an amplifier. The output is uh, no, greater than the input will be the amplifier. But for a passive devices like isolator, alternators or filters, uh, now I'm not using an active filters here. That is not uh, no. as far as uh, the microstrip designs, active filter is not possible. Only the passive filter you can do, meaning that the output will be always less than the or equals to the input. So in that case, the reflected voltage divided by instant. So this will be always will be less than or equals to denominator. So if you take this is a 1, the output will be 1 or less than 1. It can be 0 0.9 or 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4 like that. So then effective, this will be always less than or equals to 1. So that is the reason in S matrix, we will find all the values will be less than or equals to 1. Okay. So if you come to the lossless property, what we have to do is there are two uh, subcategory in the lossless. One is a uh, unitary property, another is a zero property. Okay, so uh, maybe when I tell that, it may be a little bit, uh, no, um, with the equation, if I tell it, it may be a little confusing. Probably I will take the numbers and I'll tell you. So let us take the same values 0 0.8, 0 0.1, 0 0.6, 0 0.3. To check that whether this is having a lossless or lossy property, take each element in the row, take a square of it and add everything. If it is coming 1, this is a lossless. If it is not coming 1, this is a lossy. Is that clear? So take any elements in the row, all the elements in the row, not any, not any, all the elements in the row, take a square of each element, add everything. If it is coming 1, it is a lossless. It is called unitary property. What is that uh, zero property is? Take one element and take the conjugate of other elements, multiply these two and if it is coming zero, then it is a zero property. Okay. So if I put it in the equations, probably what I will do is this SIG, uh, if you take that square, okay. So this I and J probably I will take, if you take as a one, I is a row, this 1j, right? S12, S11, S12, this S13, square, square. So I'll take 1i square and uh, j is varying from 1 to uh, probably yeah, some value, definite value. If it is coming 1, so that is the unitary property. What is that uh, zero property? I'll take uh, one column and another column. This is my 
S first row uh, first column first row for column G and if I take the second row uh, or first row second column okay maybe K okay so I'll take a conjugate of it so if I change this J and K value if it is coming zero this is called zero property okay so these equations you can uh, easily write S I J and S uh, S one K second row uh, sorry first row second column okay so I mean to say that you take that how in the examples no in the given uh, numericals it is easier to do with the unitary property because you have to take a conjugate and multiply that and if it is coming zero then only it is a zero property instead of doing that it is easier to do with the unitary property you can check that if both condition any of one condition is met then it is a lossless okay there is a zero property and unitary property unitary property says that you take any row take all the elements square it add everything if it is coming one it is a lossless if it is not coming one it is a lossy and second one is uh, take that one element from one column take uh, another element from another column and second element conjugate it multiply then if it is coming zero then it is a lossless property okay so i will show that uh, i will write one problem and you can easily do that okay so i'll write an s matrix and say that uh, if the network is reciprocal and lossless or all the properties either is matched or not matched whether it's lossy or lossless whether it's uh, symmetric or not symmetric intermediate okay so this is my s matrix for so one of the two coordinates 0 degree 0.85 minus 45 degree and uh, 0.85 this is 45 degree and 0.2 zero, zero. so determine if the network is reciprocal and lossless and also matched okay by seeing that you can easily find out this is kind of piece questions you can easily find out this is s matrix is it uh, fine with that the values s matrix can have a no it can be a polar it can be a complex number because uh, I am taking S1 on magnitude for return loss calculation, not a whole S1 on if you remember. 20 log of I have taken. So, if you take a magnitude only, it becomes a return loss. Okay. So, in general, S matrix can be a complex number in the polar format 0 0.150 degree, 0 0.85 minus 45 degree, 0 0.85 45 degree, and 0 0.20 degree. Tell me that first thing. Let us go with a, a mass property. Whether it is matched or not matched, whether this first and second quote is matched or not matched, you can put it in the chat. Let us go one by one. What is first is a matched? Matched means what? There is no reflection in the first and second quote. How I can say? Means that V1 minus by V1 plus the incident and reflection, that is a S11 or V2 minus by V2 plus, I mean to say S22, supposed to be what for a matching? I mean to say, is that clear? Uh, no, if any power is incident in the first port, there should not be any reflection. And any voltage incident in the second port, there should not be any reflection. Pro meaning that what? It's properly matched. What is the matching? Matching in the sense that impedance of this port is perfectly matched to the Z0. What is that? ZL minus Z0 and ZL plus Z0. What is that? Gamma. Reflection. There is no reflection. Whenever that uh, the, the impedance in this point, it can be also same. Any impedance, input impedance should be equals to the, the line impedance. Here is a wave impedance. Okay, that means to the impedance there is no variation. If there is no variation, there is no reflection. So in that case uh, for S matrix, whether it's lost, whether it's matched or not matched, I have a 
S1 on is written, I have written V1 minus by V1 plus. S22, I have written V2 minus by V2 plus. Is it audible? I think uh, I'm not getting any response. Okay, I think it's uh, my audible, right? So, what is this S1 on and S22? is V1 minus reflected in the first port and incident also same port. S22 is V2 minus reflected on the second port and incident also second port. So this is only happen in the high frequency circuits. I told uh, that what we have seen in the transmission line, the simple two wires will act like a reflection, uh, reflecting a wave if the impedance is not matched. That is what the happens in the high frequency because that uh, the wavelength is comparable to the physical length of the cable so that uh, the voltage current changes, so it become a distributed impedance. So whenever the impedance is varying throughout the line from RV to Mysore, so if you measure somewhere the impedance randomly it is changing after the PDD, after the Chanpatna, after that Mandi, each time the impedance is changing, I don't know what impedance. So if I measure that impedance, if I correct that impedance to the line impedance, I am going to match that throughout from here to Mysore, so that there is no impedance mismatch. If there is no impedance mismatch, that is a very important condition to send any power from here to Mysore. So that is what the importance basically. The impedance matching very basic criteria to be uh, addressed for high frequency lines or devices or circuits. Okay. So is that clear? So the matching is again important things. So what is that S1 known equals to V1 minus by V1 plus and S2 is V2 minus by V2 plus for matching. Surprisingly, why I am not getting any response? Okay. So, what is that S1 on and S2 to? Zero, sir. Zero. Zero. Okay. Fine. So, that uh, both will be zero. Okay. So, this S matrix. I, both has to be zero for matching. But if you look this here, and a given S matrix, both is not zero, so it is not matched. That uh, the port one and port two is not matched or not matched. Okay, and uh, coming to the next property. So the next property is symmetric. This is a little tricky. Okay, we do the mistakes generally. So if you look that uh, the uh, the symmetric properties, so S12 equal to S21. I mean to say this is not telling that magnitude of S1 equal to S21. It is saying that hold the complex number has to be the same. If you look that here, there is small difference uh, with the angle basically. You know? uh, if you look here, this is minus 45 degree, this is a plus 45 degree. Okay, I have to be a little careful about when you are uh, doing for this kind of problems because this the symmetric property is valid that whole test matrix value including that complex part including the angle part in case of polar. So that both has to be the same to you know uh, tell that it is having a symmetric property. I mean to say S12 complete as a uh, you know, complex number should be equal to the S21. Okay, here that is not a scale, uh, it's not the case, so it is not having any symmetric property, it is not symmetric, even though the phases are uh, the value same, but it is just an opposite phase, okay. So that have to be uh, uh, you know, taken care when you are answering that. So the third property is lossless. So if you take that the magnitude, here I can take the magnitude, not the angle, and take a square of it, 0.15 square. And uh, the second value is 0.85 square. So if you add that, definitely I think it won't come equals to 1, not equal to 1. So it is not a lossless, it is a loss series. So it doesn't have any uh, matching, no matching. It is a lossy and non reciprocal device. Okay. Similarly, you can do many problems like that. Uh, if you take an isolator, uh, for what is the ideal isolator? I will. Uh, can you write that? 
So one of the important S parameter is one of the use I told in the last class. It is, it will give you a blueprint, uh, the behavior of the device. Either you know the S parameter, you know what is that behavior, or from the behavior you can write the S matrix. There are some problems. Uh, no, they will tell you to construct the S parameter by giving the the function only. Okay, uh, that is one way of telling. And uh, sometimes they will give S matrix and ask you to find out their characteristics. You know, what is the properties, uh, how it will behave, and if you give some power, what will happen to that other port. So either giving S matrix and uh, you know, finding out the, the behavior or giving a behavior first and asking them you know, to write to S matrix. So both are actually the same. So here uh, I am going to give that uh, you know, function, you fill it the S matrix. As we have already discussed, you know, the isolator the function is uh, exactly this is a 3D device. There is a cavity is there to um, inside there is a cavity. It will the microwave signal will start to inside the uh, isolator inside like it's a rectangular waveguide. So here, uh, uh, what is the isolator? Is this a one two port device? And if you give that any uh, uh, voltage, it has to come as it is. Let us take, I thank you. I'm taking ideal case. One voltage, I should get one voltage here. And uh, that should not be perfectly matched. This isolator should be perfectly matched on this port. I mean to say, there should not be any reflection, no reflection, either in any of the port, no reflection. The first, also in the second. I need very ideal uh, you know, characteristics. So there should not be any reflection either in the first or second port. And also uh, the, all the power which I am sending, it has to go to here. Uh, from the first to two, it should transfer as it is. The reverse case, uh, from two to one, there should not be no transmission. Okay, I mean to say from two to one, there should not be no. So what is that S matrix for this? How do you write that ideal S matrix for an isolator? I gave that all the uh, the ideal behavior of the isolator. Uh, the input, whatever you uh, will give, the output has to be the same. And there should not be no reflection from uh, any of the input or output port. And it should be unidirectional. It cannot be a reverse. It, it has to be nil. There should not be any reflection uh, in the opposite directions. How I can fill it? I can go one by one. Uh, let us start with uh, no reflection in the each port. If there is no reflection, diagonal has to be zero. Okay, and uh, we will go to the other one, uh, the unidirectional, and also there should not be any loss inside the isolator. If I give one voltage, I should get a one voltage. What is that uh, related to that? Output at two from one, supposed to be if I give uh, the input is one, output also should be one. S two one should be one. So that is S21, this is S11, this is S12, this is S21, this is S22. So S21 supposed to be 1. What is that S12? S12 is, is nothing but opposite direction. Output at first port, input is a second port. The input, even though if I give any voltage, let us take one voltage. The output, I mean to say that first port, I should not get, e, I get any value because the opposite direction should not conduct. Uh, because it should have an infinity isolation. So S12 is 0. So this is my characteristics of ideal isolator. Now you check that uh, all properties, whether it's a matching, lossy, or lossless, or reciprocal, that you can easily extract the data from these its parameters. So if you look that, um, I mean to say that, 0, 0, diagonals are 0, so it is matched, matched condition, okay. And uh, if you say that, uh, again, symmetric, S12 is not equal to S21, so it is not symmetric device, that we know that because it is any direction, not symmetric, okay. And lossless or lossy, that is again tricky, okay. If one row it is, if you take magnitude 1 square and 0 square, it is 1, it comes that lossless, but if you take this 0 square and 0 square, it is not equal to 1, so it is a loss. So, in effective, it is not a lossless, it is a lossy. Okay, uh, that is what uh, we can extract. Whatever the lossless should be 
are applicable for all the rows in the S matrix. That is what important here, basically. Okay, when I design that S matrix, uh, now I, if I want to make this device is lossless, so I have to make sure that uh, no, when I add the square of each rows, that is very important. Each row square has to be equals to one. And in this case, isolator can uh, point out. Uh, you can uh, uh, have a doubt like uh, if, if it is a lossy in the first row, it's telling that zero square plus zero square is not equals to one, so it is a lossy. Whether is it going to affect my design? Uh, definitely not, because I'm not anyway going to use that S12 in the opposite directions, right? Isolator always will be used from uh, the transmission from 1 and 2. So 1 and 2, if it is perfectly working, is fine. I, anyway, I'm not going to use it in the opposite. Only to check that how much proper isolation, I may use it. That case, it is a, maybe a lossy. I, I am not uh, much uh, going to use that in the practice, so that I don't need to worry about uh, it's a lossless. Uh, it's not. It is not a lossless because of S parameter of first row is not equals to one. So it is a uh, uh, giving the problem. No, because what I we nearly need is the second row S two one. Okay, that is what I need to check that if the device condition for my uh, requirement. If it that case, if it is a lossless, that is quite good enough. The same uh, concept we will use it in the. Three port device that's what we call as uh, you know, T junction device that is E plane and S plane T. There also we will take that which is more practically we are going to use that. So, that case I will keep that uh, path is lossless and which is I may not use it much that I can make it as a lossy. So, there is a practical convenience we will choose that lossy and lossless between the port which is uh, according to our requirement. Okay, so with that. Uh, S parameters and with that small problems, we'll stop here. Uh, I hope uh, some more questions may be there. Uh, you can put it in the chat or you can uh, mail me or put it in the website. So I'll try to answer it. And uh, the reference book is like uh, browser. So you can see that uh, these uh, S parameters, all the details in that uh, uh, textbook. Okay. So with that, I will stop and uh, we'll see you in the other class. Then uh, till then, take care and uh, we'll see you in the next class. Bye.